Hi everyone, I'm Jane, and today we're going to paint this gorgeous harvest garden. Make sure you check out the video description below for a full list of materials, as well as a link to our Art Monster Squad Facebook group where you can share your version of this painting with us. Now let's get started. Now to start out, I'm going to cover my background in a fairly light shade of gray using titanium white and Mars black. I'm going to take my one inch flat brush and wet it in the jar and wipe off the extra water on the edge. I want this to be pretty light, so I'm going to load it up with white paint, lots and lots of white paint. And then I'll just grab a little bit of black on a corner. Now, when I'm painting this background, I'm not going to worry about making it blend perfectly, but I'm going to make all of my brush strokes go straight up and down. And that's because the little streaks will help give me the indication of very distant trees. And I feel like that is way too dark, but that's not a big deal because I can just grab some more white and go over it. Just make sure you do that before it dries. Otherwise, it won't blend into it. It will just paint over top of it. So I'm just going to get some more white and go right over it. And see how you can tell that my brush strokes went straight up and down and it might look like tree shadows once we get going. Because we're painting this all in black and white, the background anyway, you wanna make sure that you don't get it too dark so that when we get to some of the foreground elements, they don't blend in with the background. And in fact, I know that I want my gate to stand out very well, so I'm gonna add a little more white there just so my gate doesn't blend into the background. Now this bottom part I know is gonna be the ground. And so I'm gonna do my brush strokes side to side. You're not really gonna see any of it, but it's a good way to remind yourself where you want your ground to be. And I might even make it just a little bit darker. So I picked up a bit more black. I'm just using super light pressure there to kind of dust it in so I don't have a hard line that I have to deal with later. And this part doesn't matter. I'm going to have a column that goes over top of it. So it doesn't matter that I didn't bring that down far enough. And my background is still wet. And if you want, you can let it dry before you do this next part. But I'm going to take my 5 8 inch angle brush. The size of it doesn't really matter. If all you have is a half inch, you can use that too. Now, the reason I'm using this old one is because it's kind of puffy on the edge. I don't know if you can tell that, but this brush does not have a nice crisp shape anymore. And that really helps me when I'm trying to get these distant, kind of craggy looking fall trees because the brush is going to kind of break apart as I'm painting lines and I like that effect. I feel like if these trees were too crisp, it would kind of throw off the feeling I'm going for. So I wet it in my jar and wiped it off on the edge, and I'm gonna take a little bit of Mars Black and blend it in with some white. I want a color that's darker than the background, but I don't want it to be terribly dark because again, then I'll have to contend with that when I'm trying to put my darker elements on top, and I might get things lost in each other. Hold it up to your canvas to judge, and that's pretty close to this shade over here. But it's definitely darker than this part in the middle. So I'm gonna stick with that for now. I'm gonna flip my brush upside down so the long point is down, because remember that point always drags when you're using an angle brush. I'm gonna start my trees at the bottom and just lightly just drag up. I'm not trying to draw trees. I'm really just kind of doing some lines and maybe every once in a while it breaks off a little bit. And notice because my canvas is still wet, sometimes I'm just cutting through that paint. Sometimes I'm picking up parts of it and transferring it around. And that's kind of helping me get this ghostly effect of distant trees that I'm looking for. Some of these lines are just straight up. Some of them branch off a little. And let them overlap because that's gonna help give the impression of a deep forest full of lots and lots of trees. Also notice how I'm holding my brush. I'm holding it about halfway 
And when I put it on the canvas, I'm not putting full pressure because then I get really fat trees. So I'm just kind of going like this. It's just a little bit of pressure and I'm streaking it up. I'm not trying to make sure that the trunk stays a certain width or that it doesn't fuzz out. I'm just getting it on there. I think I'm gonna darken it just a little bit and do a few more. These darker ones, maybe I'll take up a little higher. And all the way to the edge. Get a little, little extra water on your brush if your paint isn't spreading the way you need it to. And I'm even gonna go just a little bit darker. And I think that's it. I just really like how we didn't actually draw trees but these different colored lines absolutely make it look like there's a lot of trees back there. Now I'm gonna take this little tiny flat. It says it's a number four, but again, all the companies number them a little different. It's not very wide. I think it's a little less than a quarter of an inch. And I'm gonna load up with just some of this gray. It doesn't really matter which color. And what I'm gonna do is come in and just kind of touch in all kinds of directions. See how I'm rolling my brush as I go? So I'm doing like this. Some of them overlap, some of them don't. This is just gonna give an indication that there's a little bit of foliage left on these trees. I'm using very light pressure and really not very much paint. That's gonna help give that kind of distant effect. Just kind of scattered around. It doesn't have to be right on top of a branch. There doesn't even have to be a branch there. Because these trees are so distant, you wouldn't see all of the details in there. So don't try and put them all in there. And again, my background paint is still a little wet. So as I'm going along with these leaves, I'm smearing into that a little bit too, which will help kind of scatter the color around, keep everything looking really distant, and almost blend it in with the background. I'm gonna go back to my angle brush for a minute and I'm gonna load back up with some of this gray. It doesn't really matter if it's the light gray or the dark gray or whatever. And I'm just gonna give the indication of some grasses. So I'm using the edge flat and I'm just gonna kinda flick up different heights, different directions. I'm not worrying about the edges here too much because that's where my pillars are gonna go. I mix that color up just a little bit darker. Just a little darker toward the edges here. Just in case I see it, I want it to seem darker. And I'm using very, very, very light pressure here. Can you see that my brush isn't bending? It's just the very ends of the bristles. All right, one last thing before we let this background dry. I have my 5 8 inch angle brush and I'm gonna mix up quite a dark gray, not black. I don't want it to be black, but I just want it to be a very, very dark gray. And I'm gonna draw a large tree on the side here. 
Now again, because the pillar is gonna be here, you don't have to worry about what the trunk looks like, but I'm gonna paint it in because it helps me get the full idea of the tree. I'm gonna put a lot of attention into it though. Just enough so I know where it is, how it moves, how white it is. Remember, you push a little harder to get a wider line and release your pressure to get these nice narrow lines. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll start adding all of those super fun details. All right, so my canvas is dry now and I'm still using my angle brush. And I'm gonna mix up kind of a dark gray. Maybe about as dark as what we did the tree with. So pretty dark, but not black. And I'm gonna draw where I want my pillars to be so I'm going to have this one be right about here. It's a little above the center of the canvas, not quite on the one third mark, about right here. I'm just going to draw a straightish line over. It's an old rock wall, so it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. I'm going to bring it out about a third of the way and then straight down. just below the grass because I want this grass to seem like it's behind the wall. So if I have the wall stop above it, that's gonna throw the perspective off. And then straightish across on the bottom. And then I'm just gonna fill that all in. You don't have to worry about the color here being real consistent. Get a little more water so that it actually fills in the canvas there. This color doesn't have to be real consistent. It's the grout that's between our rocks and a lot of this is gonna be covered up with rocks anyway. So just get a color on there. And the same thing on the other side. Make sure it's generally about as tall as this one, but if it's a little off, again, it's an old rock wall, so that's okay. Okay, we're gonna start adding our rocks to the wall. And I'm gonna use this flat. It says it's a number 10, but again, that could be different from brand to brand. It's about a quarter of an inch wide at the bottom. Now, don't overthink these rocks. Seriously, I know we had some problems with rocks in the Moon River, but these rocks, very simple. So I'm gonna take this brush and I'm gonna mix up kind of a medium gray, definitely lighter than this gray but not a ton lighter. And I'm just gonna start drawing some kind of randomish shapes. So, about like that and fill it in. And then I wanna leave some room between the rocks. So I'm gonna bring my other one around the side. And when I get to the edge here, I'm gonna take it outside of the wall just a little bit. Just so the wall doesn't look completely flat. Like it's got some little rocks poking out of the sides. And each of your rocks can be a slightly different color. They're all different rocks and they wouldn't maybe have an, a very consistent color. So different shapes different colors, different positioning, different sizes. Just get a good variation going in here. So 
Some can be kind of rounded, some can be kind of angular. They all kind of fit together though. And out just a little bit on the edge of the wall. Try and keep your shapes as random as possible so you don't end up with a bunch of rocks side by side that look exactly the same. And let's try something. I didn't do this on any of my practices, but I'm gonna do it here. I've got the same color about that I've been using on the rocks. And I'm gonna do some dashes that are on the edge of the brush like this with a little bit of pressure to get kind of a wide line. So I'm not using it flat because then I would just get that. I'm gonna put some little rocks on the top of the wall here. And there, kind of push. Just give it kind of a randomish shape. Still with a little bit of the grout between them. They're not right up against each other. And rocks aren't perfectly flat, so these aren't very specifically shaped. They kind of bump and move a little bit. All right, now we're gonna highlight our rocks and we're not gonna get real crazy with these highlights. They're gonna be very subtle and really impressionistic. So I'm still using my quarter inch flap and I'm gonna mix up a lighter gray. Quite a bit lighter. And just start kind of slashing it through. And I'm using really light brush pressure so that I get this kind of streaky effect. And you can add your highlights into a couple of areas. But see, that's really all I'm doing. I'm not trying to blend it or give it a real distinct shape or anything. Let it be nice and streaky. We'll give these ones up here a little bit too. And my brush is kind of dry, so I'm getting a little bit of skipping where you can see the texture of the canvas through it, but I like that, so I'm probably not gonna re-wet my brush at all while I'm doing this. And I'm actually using very little paint. So 
So really what these highlights are doing is indicating that some parts of the rock maybe point out a little bit farther than other parts so they're not flat rocks they've got some texture to them and that there's also some variation in the crystal structure of the rocks and some of them might have lighter spots and some of them have darker spots If you end up making your highlight too much on one, then just mix up your darker color, paint the rock back in, and come back to it. But notice how quickly I'm working. I'm not trying to micromanage what my paint or my color is doing. Once you're done with that, you can come back in, get a little bit of a lighter color, pretty close to white, still very dry paint, and just add some little lighter pops in there. And the lighter pops don't have to just be on that first highlight color. You can throw it into the darker color too. But I'm only adding a little of these lighter pops, not very much. And then we'll do the same thing over here. If you wanted to add like a lantern or something, I thought about putting a lantern up here, but in the end, I felt like I had enough focal elements that a lantern would have just been too much for what I was doing. But if you wanted to add a lantern up here with like a yellow glow, then after you're done highlighting your rocks, come back in with a little bit of the color in your light and do a bit of this on the rocks too, especially with the rocks closest to the lantern. And that will really make it seem like there's some light being thrown on the rocks. That was actually part of my original plan, but I just decided I didn't need it. Again, guys, don't spend too much time on these highlights. I think that the really quick, impressionistic style highlights like this, with the canvas texture showing through, really helps give the impression of some kind of weathered old rocks that have been sitting here for quite a while. And there's really not a right or wrong way to do this. These little highlights can be as strong as you want, as dark as you want, wherever you want on here. So if your highlights don't look just like mine, just like with everything else, I tell you that's fine because everybody's gonna do this completely different. And I think that that's the fun thing about painting. If everybody did the things totally the same, then painting would be boring, you know? There would be no need to look at art. There really would be no reason to do it, right? Because it's an expression of you and how you interpret things and how your personal preferences and experiences the way your mind processes the information, it's really an expression of all of those things. And if you were to come out with a painting that looked exactly like mine, I don't know, I feel like that wouldn't be quite as fun because this is my expression of this idea and the whole point of you painting it is to get your expression of this idea out. Sometimes you guys are hard on yourself and I hear a lot it doesn't look like yours well it shouldn't look like mine so don't try and make it look like mine 
make it look like yours, and then be happy with that. And our little bright highlights, and then we are done with the wall. Alright, let's work on our path and we're almost done using just black and white but I am still going to use just black and white I'm going to mix up kind of a darkish color maybe roughly the color of the grout that we used on the wall and I'm bringing over a little extra drip of water because I want this color to be kind of transparent and also it will keep it wet longer so when I start adding other colors it will blend into it a bit now all of my brush strokes on my path are going to be horizontal. And I'm going to start back here up in the grass area, horizontal-ish anyway. Don't go over your wall if you can help it. I am going to bring that down at the edge of the wall just so I can make sure I don't go over it. But then horizontal. And as I come out, I can start going past the wall a bit. I don't know if you can tell how transparent that color is, but I can see the paint underneath it. And then bringing it out to the side. Now you can see the brush strokes here, but I like that because it says that the path is a little bit worn. I like these jagged, uneven edges to it. I'm gonna get just a little bit of a darker color and start lightly working that in. Not filling in everything I just did. I'm just adding a bit of a darker color here and there. And because I used that first paint so wet, it's blending a bit. Let's straighten this line out a little. A little bit of a lighter color. I'm not mixing it, I just kind of slashed through there. And I'm using very light pressure here just to add some highlighted area. Now we're gonna start mixing in a little bit of color. So I've got some burnt umber here. I'm gonna grab a little bit of black, get a nice dark color. Maybe just a tiny bit of white, just to gray it down, make it not quite so transparent. And I'm gonna fill this in. I'm not worrying about brush directionality or trying to make it look like anything because we're gonna cover this up for the most part with some grasses. Take it all the way up to the edge of the wall. And then when I get to my path, I'm using my angle brush on the edge and I'm just gonna feather it into the edge of that path a bit. If it goes over your path a little, that's perfectly okay. Don't try and keep them completely separate because that's what's gonna help make this path look like it's very old. Maybe it hasn't been used so much lately and the grasses are starting to kind of fill in over top of it. We're gonna do the same thing over here, right up to the edge of the wall. kind of feather into the path a bit.
If you want to revisit your path back here and mix up some more gray color, maybe a little tiny bit darker, and just kind of flick some grasses over top of it, just to soften that line a little, you can do that. I'm using super, super light pressure there so I don't get big streaks of it. Just the indication of grasses. Now let's do our gate. Now the gate that I'm gonna do is gonna be very, very simple. And one of the reasons for that is because I want a focus to be on the pumpkin and the colors that we're gonna put in the tree up here. But if you wanna put a lot of attention and detail into this gate, you can absolutely do so. So I'm gonna use this very small flat brush. So I wet it down a bit and I'm just gonna load up with pure black paint. I'm gonna use the edge of the brush. I'm not gonna use it flat. And I'm gonna start in the middle of where I want my gate to be and just start drawing some lines. And as I go, I'm gonna push a little harder in some places, release my pressure a little, and I'm gonna let it naturally be wiggly. So this fence looks really old and bent and beat up. Now, one important thing that's gonna make this fence look like it's right in line with the wall is if you bring the edge of it down below where the path is. If it stops up here, it's either gonna look farther in the distance or it's gonna look like there's a huge gap underneath it. So I just made it come down over top of the path just a little bit. Make all of the little posts on it a little bit of a different height, width. Make them wiggle a little different. And some of them don't have to come down quite as far. Just make sure you don't bring it down below where your wall is because that's gonna throw off your perspective too. It will look like, it's just gonna look strange. It'll come down to here and you won't be able to tell what is where in the plane and how your path moves. Keep a little extra water on your brush if you're getting some fuzzing out of your line. You know, a lot of times you guys complain that you can't draw straight lines and your lines are all weird or you can't keep your brush control to get a thin or a thick line. So here, I want you to embrace that if you have that problem. Let that absolutely happen. And I'm gonna take this last one almost to the wall. Now before you add the latch or the hinges, decide where your pumpkin is gonna go. I want my pumpkin over here, so I'm gonna make it appear that the gate opens over here because I don't want it to look like the pumpkin is blocking it. I'm gonna give some very simple hinges and I'm just gonna use the edge of the brush. I'm gonna just kinda touch right there for a little line. Maybe another one underneath it. Maybe a little bit of a protrusion right there and another one down here. Like I said, really super simple. Now I've got this little liner brush. It's a very, very teeny round brush. I'm gonna kind of bring a little wiggly line across here and another one across here. And then we're gonna say that this gate closes with just a chain. It's just got a chain holding it shut. So I'm gonna draw kind of a little circle, kind of a scribbly circle, and another one coming off of it. Just like that. 
Let's give it some little support beams. And in the same way, we're going to do just like we did here. We're just going to do it horizontally. So I'm going to start here and come across. Let it get a good wiggle in there. And another one down here. can add some little spikes to the top if you want, still using the edge. I'm gonna touch right here at the top. And as I come down, I'm just gonna push. Simple little spike. So here's what I did. Rather than dragging it down, I put it on the canvas and then just start pushing down. It doesn't work quite so well on my smooth plate. Let's see about the back. So I'm just kind of squishing the bottom of it down. So these won't be perfectly shaped spikes, but it's on a really imperfectly shaped fence. So that is okay. And maybe that one's missing. I'm gonna leave that one off. I think I'm gonna leave that one off too. You can even add some on the bottom here if you want, but I'm gonna do these bottom ones much smaller. Just make sure if you're going to do these little ones on the bottom that you have room for them because you don't, again, you don't want it to bring it down below the level of the rock wall. Now we're going to start drawing our pumpkin. So I've got some white chalk here and I'm going to just sketch out an oval where I want my pumpkin to be. I want kind of a largish pumpkin, maybe not quite down that far. Roughly about like that. Now I'm going to take my little flat brush, the one we used on the gate, and I'm going to load up with some burnt umber. We're going to start in the middle and make little kind of football shaped things. So we'll start up here in the center, bring it down around doesn't have to be real straight or perfect because we're going to fill all of this in anyway. But I'm just getting an idea of where my elements are going to be and shaping the top and the bottom of the pumpkin. And we'll do another one on the other side and it's going to be the same type of shape. I'm only going to do half of it, but if you need to draw out the whole shape, that's fine. So let me draw out this whole shape just so you can kind of see how they overlap. So see it's the exact same shape, it's just set off a little bit. So we have the bump at the top and the bumps at the bottom. When you're doing your pumpkin, make sure that you bring it down below the edge of the wall. Don't put the bottom of the pumpkin right at the base of the wall because it's going to seem like it's floating and not sitting on the ground. So there's our basic pumpkin shape. Now we can just kind of fill it all in. And I'm using this paint kind of thick because it's a little transparent and I want to make sure that you can't see through to the wall through the pumpkin. And 
Let's go ahead and do our stem. So I'm gonna come from here up and I'm kind of twisting this little flat brush as I go to get a really naturally shaped jagged stem. And then we'll come from over here up, same thing, kind of twisting it a little. And don't worry about it if it's a little bit transparent because we'll add some white and some highlights in a little bit and that will help make it less transparent. I'm just kind of shaping it, giving it some little jagged spots. Now I've got some naphthol crimson and if you don't have this color you can also use cadmium red medium hue which is more of an orange. I prefer the naphthol because it's just a little bit more of an intense bright color than the cadmium red. I didn't clean off my brush. I still have the burnt umber on it. I just wiped off some of the paint and I'm going to get some red and now I'm going to kind of draw those shapes again. Let the edge be nice and hard. My burnt umber is still kind of wet, which is good because then it blends in. But then if you put too much pressure on your brush, it kind of scrapes it away. So use your red a little bit thicker. And if you're having a hard time with it, then just let it dry and then come back with the red. But I really like to do this when the burnt umber is wet because then the, the crimson picks up a little bit of it and it streaks together. So the top edge down and notice as I take my brush down, the red kind of tapers off and that helps me get a little bit of a shadow there. But if you're not getting that, you can always add the shadow back in. Just get this preliminary layer of red on there. See how I left it darker right there next to this football shape. That's what we're gonna do all the way across here. That's gonna help keep that pumpkin shape rather than just ending up being a big orange ball. But again, if you lose it, you can add it back in. So don't stress about that part too much. I'm using really light pressure there to try and keep it. Okay, that's our first layer. Now I'm gonna go, did you see how I dunked into that paint? And I have a good glob on there. I just went straight into it like that. Lots and lots of paint. And I'm gonna start amping up where I want the highlights. So we'll say this first layer where you can see a lot of the burnt umber is a little bit of the shadow color. So I'm gonna take this and use light pressure because it applies it very thick when I use super light pressure and mostly at the top. And I want my highlight to mostly be on this side of the pumpkin. I'm gonna apply quite a bit of it. And let it be a little darker toward the bottom and on this side. Again, really light pressure right there. Just to dust out that line, I'm barely even touching it.
slight pressure. But you can always add your shadow back if you lose it. And I am gonna come back and add a little bit of shadow at the bottom. Now on this side, I'm not gonna have my highlights be quite as bright. At the top I will, but then as it comes down, I'm gonna let it go into the shadow color a little bit more. See, so on this side, I took that bright color almost all the way to the bottom. Over here, I only took it about in the top third of the pumpkin. Now I still have the red on my brush and I have cadmium yellow deep hue. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna reach in and just grab a dunk of that and start slashing it through the brightest parts of my pumpkin. And I'm gonna let there be some little lines in there. I don't need a perfect blend. And I'm going to bring that bright color almost all the way down there again. And on this side, it's mostly just going to be right up at the top. Just a bit down the one side. I cleaned off my brush. I'm going to get a little more burnt timber. And this is where you can go back in and add your highlights back in. I'm not using the paint as thick as I did with the red and the yellow. So just at the bottom, and kind of dust it up a bit. If you applied that paint really thick, your red should still be wet and it will streak into it and that will help you. I'm gonna keep the shadow really low on this side. and higher on this side. Clean brush, let's do the highlights on our stem. I got a little white, I'm gonna mix it in with some burnt ember here. Just get a little bit of a lighter color. And you can really highlight this however you like because the stem is kind of it kind of twists. It doesn't have to be all up along the top edge. It can kind of move from the top to the bottom. And I'm just kind of streaking on almost like we did the highlights on the rocks. And come back with a little bit of solid burn timber and add some shadow spots back in. This is actually really similar to how I highlighted the pumpkin where I dunked in and got a big blob of the paint and then use super light pressure just to kind of dust it on. where we feel like there should be a shadow. I'm gonna wipe off a little bit of that and get some white. Just kind of mix it with the brown that's on my brush and add some bright highlights in here. just a little of this cadmium yellow in there. Just to give it a bit more life. Add back in some of my low lights. I decided I need a little 
brighter highlight right there. I could probably mess with this stem for days. No one to stop. Now before we add the grasses, we're gonna let our pumpkin dry for a few minutes. So we'll come work on our tree and I'm still using that little flat. I'm gonna load up with burnt umber, kind of thin, not big blobs of paint. And remember how we did these leaves in the background? We're gonna do pretty much the same thing, but we can put a little bit more pressure on our brush to get some bigger areas. And see how it's like random dashes. Some of them overlap, some of them don't. Some are big, some are small. On some of them I'm using kind of the corner of my brush, like there. On some of them I'm using the brush flat. So start on, this, on the branch, but then move out from it. So there, start it on the branch. I'm going to move out away from it too. And use the paint on your brush until it's gone and you just get little fuzzy lines. Because that will help give the indication that you've got some branches that are away from you. Or leaves, sorry, not branches. Don't be too controlled here, just really let some of them get crazy. I'm gonna get some naphthol. I didn't clean off my brush. There's still some burnt umber on there. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm not trying to cover all of the burnt umber. I'm not trying to fill in all of the blank spots. I'm just doing the exact same thing, just with my naphthol. And it can go outside of where the burnt umber is. It doesn't have to be confined right to that area. And I am using this paint a little heavier than the burnt umber. If you wanted to do this part with a palette knife, you could absolutely do that. That might give you some really fun texture. You could even add a couple little leaves kind of laying on top of the fence. And I'm just gonna wipe that off. I'm not cleaning it off. Just wipe off the extra. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my cadmium yellow. You can use your cadmium yellow quite a bit thicker because it's so much more transparent. If you use it quite as thin, you might not really see it. And I'm using a little bit less of it. Just like on the pumpkin, we used less of the yellow than we did of the crimson. And I like that it's streaking in with some of that crimson and the burnt umber that's still wet. Gives us a little more variation in the leaves without really having to work for it too much. And we'll do a little bit here. I'm just going to do a couple on the path. I'm not going to get real crazy with it. So I have some burnt umber. Just add a couple little dashes of the color, maybe down into here just a little. Some crimson. And some yellow. Now the paint on my pumpkin, I applied very thick, so it's still quite wet. So I'm gonna get my blow dryer and dry it off, and then we'll come do our grasses and we'll be done. Now I'm not gonna clean off my chalk just yet. I'll have it cleaned off so that you can see it when I'm done. But if I try and clean off, I may remove some more paint. But I'll just show you right down here how to remove it. This brush is just slightly damp. And if you just wipe over it, it pretty much takes it off. 
you can paint your grasses over top of it. I'm just showing you how to get off of there. So I'm gonna use my angle brush and I want really subtle grasses. I don't want tall grasses like we did on the autumn barn. So I have a bit of yellow oxide and I'm gonna grab some burnt umber, mix it in there, just get kind of a golden brown. And I wanna wipe a lot of that paint off. I want a very thin paint here. And I'm gonna start with the edge of my brush and just kind of flick up, really like we did back here. Start flicking up. I'll let it go over the edge of the pumpkin a bit in the back, but I don't wanna bury the front. So as I get forward, I'm gonna make the brush stroke shorter and shorter. I can come up over the bottom edge of the pumpkin a little bit, but I just don't wanna bury it. And as we get towards the edge of the path, I'm gonna let it overlap the path a bit. And this is kind of transparent, but we'll add a couple of layers. It won't be transparent. And then that same type of brush stroke in here. It's just a short brush stroke and I'm kind of making it all move toward the path. But if you want to do it so that it moves in all different directions, that's fine. And we'll do some on the other side, up to the wall and let it overlap the base of the wall a bit. And now let's mix a little white in there. Don't want too light of a color, but noticeably lighter. And just like we left this side of the pumpkin more in shadow, I'm gonna keep the brightest parts of the grass this way. So I'm gonna start over here, super light pressure, so I don't get giant streaks of the color. right up to the pumpkin. And if you feel like that's a little light, which I do, I'm just gonna mix some of the yellow back into it. Up over the base of it just a bit. And I'm gonna mix some more brown in there for this shadowy side. Whenever I go back for color, if you notice, I'm picking up different mixtures. I'm not trying to get a consistent color. I wanna say that this is really dry, dead grass. Wipe off some of that. And I'm actually gonna grab a hint of black, and mix it in with some burnt umber so that I can get a nice dark shadow in the grass back here. Yeah, I'm really liking how dead this grass looks. And we'll do some on this side, up over the wall. And again, moving toward the path. And let it overlap it a bit. And then I think I'm gonna take the shadowy color Got a little bit of that brown and then a tiny hint of that black-brown mixture. I'm gonna take my shadowy color right here on this edge. So I guess I should show you my brush stroke. What I'm doing is using the edge 
just touching it like that, and then it's just kind of a flick. That's all I'm doing over and over. And I like doing that because the line I get down here almost looks like a little patch where the grass is growing out. And then I get really fuzzed out tops for some super dry grasses. So even if you go longer, you still get the same type of look. And actually, I think I'm gonna bring one more little shadow spot into the grass right down here and then we're done. And then I'm gonna sign it. And there's your harvest garden gate. I hope you enjoyed painting this one and I hope it's the perfect mix between moody and happy. Make sure you check out the video description below for a link to our Art Monster Squad Facebook group where you can share your version of this painting with us. If you haven't already, please make sure that you subscribe so that you can paint with me every Tuesday. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and maybe share it with a friend who you think would like it as well. Thank you as always for watching everyone and I'll see you next time.